big fallout over Baker Mayfield's comments yesterday that were published in GQ magazine in which he criticized the selection of Daniel Jones, quarterback for the Giants. Giants took him at number six overall in the draft. He was quoted as saying, at some point, teams have to look at winning as being a prerequisite for drafting somebody, and that's not Daniel Jones, who went 17 and 19 at Duke. He tried to clarify his comments after by saying, that's not what I said. Uh, I... I was asked my opinion about drafting quarterbacks, and this is this is what I said. I have nothing but respect for Daniel Jones, and I hope he has a, a, a great career. Daniel Jones has asked his response, and he says, hey, I'm, we're here to play football. I'm worried about this team. I'd love to have won more at Duke, and but I'm focused on right now. After everything yesterday, and Baker Mayfield, who look loves himself some Baker Mayfield, right? The, he loves saying stuff and I throwing love it out Baker there. Mayfield. He loves saying stuff and throwing it out there. Off base, Baker Mayfield, was he out of bounds saying what he said about Daniel Jones? I agree with Baker. I, I give him the benefit of the doubt. I don't think that he just outright was attacking Daniel Jones. I think just during the interview, he just he spoke his mind. He was just being honest, and he said what most people thought when that pick was made. He's like, oh, man, like I'm, I'm shocked that they picked him that early. You know, in his case, usually, yeah, you want a, you want a winner. And so he was shocked. And I, I, and I think – and that's why – that's why – so everyone's like, oh, he's backpedaling now. And I feel like that's why he was like, I need to speak out again because I didn't I didn't put it out there where I was just dissing the dude. See, I, I can see it in an atmosphere when you're doing an interview where, yeah. you know, he's he's in a like a bar restaurant and their uh, you know, sports might, center was it, on TV. But they might be in a bar yeah. restaurant because I don't know what GQ is, is, is uh, giving these people to drink with these interviews because they yeah. they're coming in hot. <laughs> They're coming in hot right now, dude. I mean, he was—he was. They're at a steakhouse type type place. Yeah. And Sports Center's on TV, and they're showing a thing on Daniel Jones, and he says, "Oh, hey, yeah, you know, I don't get the Daniel Jones selection." And I can understand where, if you're in there in a setting like that, look, you're at a restaurant, the TV's on, they're playing music, guy sits down. Not that you don't know what you're saying is going to be publicized, but just you're just talking. Yeah. And hey, you know what? This is my opinion. Of, this, this is what I think about quarterbacks. And there's kind of a disconnect with, well, hey, I'm somebody you're asking me my opinion about quarterbacks, but Mayfield's got to realize, dude, I'm a quarterback in the NFL. And when I say right. something that's critical of another quarterback, it's going to make news. I feel like he wants to swing at every pitch. He wants to get in on controversies that it's like, dude, you just got to stay away. You can't worry yourself that Sam Ellinger is the quarterback at Texas and he's, you know, he couldn't beat your high school. You got to stay away from that. You got to stay away from Duke Johnson's situation with with the team when he wanted to trade. I agree with the Duke Johnson you know? part. I agree. Like, stay away from that part. Um, but here, he could have helped himself because I'm sure in his mind, when he thinks of winner, I'm pretty sure he was a thousand percent positive that the Giants were going to pick Haskins. And then when they picked Daniel Jones, I'm sure he was like, "Whoa, you know." Well, like okay. all of us were. All of y'all. Yeah, we're like, wait a minute, this guy, this guy could you could have got him at like 28. All of y'all <laughs> could have got him then, but I saw the pick. Six. I saw the pick coming from a mile away. Really? I did. You knew Daniel Jones because they kept that pretty good under wraps when they were going to take it, him. But it makes sense though. He's part of the 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 cut the cut lift tutelage. He's part of that, and I under I understand the the seventeen nineteen, but in his defense, he's the only draft pick in his tenure there, Daniel Jones, mm-hmm. the only draft pick. Meaning, he really didn't have anybody to throw to. He didn't have a lot of plays on his team. No, you had lots of guys that didn't win but, in college, but he can play. Right, but he yeah. can play. He yeah, can, well, he's, he's proving he can now. Yeah. You know, and, and, if, and if you have a direct source who who coached Peyton, who coached Eli, and you know this guy in and out, and um, Gettleman was there when they drafted Eli, and if you're going through the checklist and you're like, "Damn, this is this is it," then then, then you go for it. Well, when you have a quarterback, it's a gut feel. I, I agree with that. Yeah. When you when you like a guy. My my opinion was my, my whole thing was that well you could have got him later nobody was going to take Daniel Jones at number six you could have waited and had that pick later on in the first round you could have got another impact guy at six as well but you believe in a quarterback that's your guy you take him because that's what it's got to be I, you know for for Mayfield you don't see quarterbacks 
criticizing other quarterbacks. And even when he wants to go so far as to say, oh, you know, it's clickbait media, it's like, no, no, no dude, you kind of just you gave said your it, opinion. Though, yeah, you said you, it. You said it, right. You said it. And right. now, you know, the, the media, which has made him into a star, now he's mad at the media that turns into clickbait. It's like, this is, this is what he, he tries to swing at every pitch. Anything that comes up, here's my opinion on this, here's this, and, it's, and you know, someone at the Browns, but he's too powerful, has to sit him down and say, all right, we got to focus on the season. And it's August 20th, and we've had four headlines from you so far this summer about stuff that really doesn't have a lot to do with this football team. And you have to just back off of that yeah. because you're the quarterback. The hard, the hard thing, though, is that none, I believe none of this will affect his play. Because that that's that's just how he is. He's able to take whatever's going on outside the world and put it to the side and play his game. And people don't see that. And that's why Baker keeps going. He's like, this is not going to bother me. I'm I'm going to be fine. I'll go shotgun a beer. I'll go, you know, talk about whoever in a magazine. I'll do whatever I need to do. But I'm still going to show up and play well. How does that play in the locker room, though? I mean, how does it play with the other players who here's another day? Oh, Baker did this. Baker did this. Baker said this. Well, they got a lot of personalities in there. Oh, they, they, got, they got a lot of crazy. They, <laughs> they got, got a lot, you know. They got yeah. a lot of personalities. Good luck, Freddie Kitchens. Yeah, they'll be they'll be okay. Um, just as long as something like what happened with Duke Johnson doesn't happen again. That well, that was that was it. That was interesting. I think I think they'll be fine until they hit adversity. That as was, long as things was, go well. Yeah, that was my whole thing. Everyone looks at this team and it's like, man, they are they are incredible on paper. On paper, they are wonderful, but. My only question or concern, like, what is the culture like? What happens when, let's say they drop three games in a row? Now what? You know, is everyone, is all of a sudden there's going to be like five new leaders because things aren't going well? You know, that happens. And so that's going to be the huge thing. Can they, are they going to be able to be in a situation where they can ride themselves? Is Freddie Kitchens, the rookie head coach, going to be able to keep everybody under control? Or is Odell going to speak out? Is Jarvis going to speak out? You know, because things aren't going well. So, uh, exactly. When they hit adversity, I 100% agree. Well, from one Super Bowl champion to another, joining us now on the hotline, Super Bowl champion, friend of the show, Joe Theismann. Joe, what's happening? Hey, guys. How are you? Joe! I'm, I'm sorry. Did Will Blackman play professional football? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to, I'm trying what's up, to Joe? <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Oh, the flames here. The flames, Joe. Uh, you guys are funny, man. Hey, Jason, good morning. <laughs> good morning. I was like, hey, listen, we got a lot of quarterbacks to get to, but I, I told Will sure. he should introduce himself as Super Bowl champion Will Blackman everywhere he goes. He won't do it. I'm not doing it. No. You, no, why? I mean, you know, we have the rings, we have the trophy. Right. It's enough. You right. know, That's I mean, enough. I don't have... I don't have to tell people I won a Super Bowl. You just did it for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, let's start here. What do you make of the controversy surrounding Baker Mayfield? Makes the comments yesterday, published in a GQ interview, that couldn't believe the Giants took Daniel Jones. You have to take winning into account in college, and Daniel Jones, obviously at Duke, did not do a lot of that. He tried to walk it back a little bit at the end of the day, but still, here's another day and another controversy with Baker Mayfield. Yeah, you know, Baker's Baker, I guess you could say, is an outspoken individual. Uh, that would be an understatement. But, you know, I mean, I don't know why guys have to sort of target other guys that are in the league. I mean, it's, you know, you talk about your football team. You talk about what you need to do to get better. You know, Baker Mayfield is not one to judge somebody else when it comes to playing the position. He's, you know, he's really in his second year playing the position. Um didn't win a Super Bowl last year. Doesn't really have the credentials to go and watch Daniel Jones work. See what he prepares, how he prepares. You know, just because you didn't win in college doesn't mean it was, it was because of you. I mean, it's like in the NFL. You know, the quarterback position is the single most dependent position on the field. If you don't have a supporting cast around you, if you don't have a defense, and just ask Jim Kelly what happens when you don't have a kicker, you're not going to win. You're not going to win a championship. So I think he's – in this one, I think he's way out of line criticizing him. I really do. When Daniel Jones responds with, hey, we're here, we're, well, I'm just not focused on this, I, I look at Daniel Jones saying – showing more leadership and understanding New York than Baker Mayfield does right. understanding being a leadership. Because when you're a quarterback, Joe, you can't just get in on everything. You know, you have to but, just – you have to let the pitch go by sometimes. Well, you know, the thing is with Baker is you basically know he's going to say something. I mean, this is, this is who he is. This is part of his personality. He's going to make a comment on something or something else, and, he, and he'll just keep on going. 
you know, all of us talking about it or him saying this, this isn't the last thing that Baker's going to say. I mean, we, we'd be kidding ourselves if we think that's going to happen. <laughs> but that's part of who Baker is. And Daniel responded in a way like, hey, you know, I'll take care of my house. You take care of your house. I kind of, you know, when he came back, um, Baker did in terms of like, that's not how I said it is clickbait. I almost kind of gave him the benefit of the doubt. I, don't, I didn't think that he would outright just say that about Daniel Jones. I just think that's how the conversation went. Yeah, so. I agree. You know, the thing is, you're right. And this is, this is part of the problem. It's like social media. Things go out on social media sometimes. And you don't, re- you don't reread it. Bell Correct does something. All of a sudden, a word goes out you didn't want. You have no intention of trying to say. And I think sometimes, especially in this day and age where, where social media is so big and, and things are misconstrued, you have to really, really watch your words. I mean, to me, why would you even talk about another quarterback in the National Football League in any context? Right. Right. And, and, I mean, why would you even put yourself in that situation? This is something I think a lot of young people do. They, they just say something, and then all of a sudden, now you've got to figure out how to dig yourself out of a hole. Right. I've done it for years. <laughs> I, mean, I've, I've been, I mean, I have. I've been, I've been an outspoken individual. And I've, I've made some mistakes when it's come to talking about other people. I try and understand somebody's situation um, and then comment on the situation, not the individual. And, you know, when it... Like I said, you don't know why they lost at Duke. You know, I think the kid throws the I think Daniel Jones is going to be a star in the National Football League. I think he has the ability to be able to throw the football. It's going to be a young giant team that he's going to inherit sometime in the very near future. Um, so when you look at Baker Mayfield's in a very similar situation in Cleveland. I mean, we've, we've got a lot of young quarterbacks in this league that I think are, are going to be fun to watch for a long time. When I see this interview, Joe, I, I, I don't know that Baker Mayfield thought that he was doing this interview from the perspective of, I'm a quarterback in the NFL. Because, you know, look, he's in a steakhouse and Sports Center's on TV and he sees Daniel Jones. He just gives his opinion about the Giants taking Daniel Jones, which many people thought at the time, why are the Giants taking Daniel Jones so early? And just thinking, well, I, here's my opinion that's, on it, right? But. That's- Stupid! The Giants needed a quarterback. You've got right. well, see me and it, Joe watch me, film. Me and Joe watch <laughs> film. Darn it! See, he he was the obvious choice. He you know Cutcliffe coached him. He went to the Manning trading. He went to the Manning uh, quarterback camps. I mean the the synergy was there from the beginning. There really wasn't any other choice to me that the Giants would take, but Daniel. I mean it didn't, they knew him. They knew his personality. They knew the type of work ethic he has. And that's they knew, everything. They knew he spent time with the Mannings. He's a, it's pedigree. There, there was no doubt in my mind that he was going to be their choice. None whatsoever. There wasn't even a debate, I don't think. Exactly. Joe Thosman with us here, Fox Sports Radio. Jason Smith, Will Blackman in for Dan and the Danettes. All right, let's go from Baker Mayfield now to Antonio Brown, who it looks like things are solved now, Joe, because he's back at camp. (laughs) He practiced. He's got a league-approved helmet, even though his grievance is scheduled for Friday. But everything looks like it's fine. And I was excited to talk to you because I think if you had sent him one of your helmets that just had the one bar and said, hey, here's a great sight line for you, I think that would have been a great opportunity. I actually thought about sending a tweet out, okay, to Antonio and say, oh, look, Antonio, I think it's a great idea that you walk away from $68 million. <laughs> just quit. Just quit. Quit. I mean, why not? I mean, just, just do it. Um, and, and so you knew this was going to get worked out. He wasn't going to walk away. He wasn't going to quit. It's just unfortunate for John, you know, that obviously it's hard knocks, and maybe that has a little bit to do with it. Maybe he wanted to be the center of attention when it came to the television show. Um, certainly, I think the Pittsburgh Steelers are going, good luck, John, uh, as far as here's, you know, here's round one. Let's see what's next on the agenda for Antonio going forward. What happens if he doesn't get enough passes? Derek Carr is not Ben Roethlisberger, okay? We can see that. What kind of offense is John going to run? The offense went through Antonio in Pittsburgh. This is what happens sometimes when guys change teams. And Will, you know this as well as anybody, yeah. Jace as well. What happens is you're in a system that complements your skill set, and you become the focal point of that system. All of a sudden, you go someplace else. Coaches try and get you involved. But the quarterback position is basically like Joe Gibbs told me when he took over the Redskins, throw to the open receiver. 
Maybe Antonio isn't going to be the guy that they're going to throw to a lot. Maybe he's going to get double covered. When does the next incident occur regarding Antonio as a distraction to a football team? Right, because defending, as a cornerback defending uh, A.B., a lot of those players were off script. Uh, going against Absolutely. going against him because Ben he's a type where he's gonna pump fake pump fake scramble pump fake and yeah I I used to watch film you know on AB I'm like okay on this down in distance he could run like this on this but a lot of times they just drew, drew plays in the dirt and right can Der- can Derek Carr do the same thing that is gonna be the the huge uh, thing that everyone's worried about well he won't he won't do it in John Gruden's system right he won't do it in that system with Randy and Brian and and, uh, and uh, Bruce before that in Pittsburgh. Then basically it was drop back, a little bit of Aaron Rodgers. Drop back, plant your foot, take a beat, and then go make a play. It's street ball, yeah. That's what it is. It becomes street ball. Hey, Joe, wanted to get your take on Andrew Luck, too, as we see this you know, this story continue to unfold. We find out yesterday Andrew Luck is now iffy at best for week one with a calf injury. And, you know, I just keep scratching my head going, okay, Andrew Luck says it's a calf, the owner says it's a bone, and the general manager says it's a high ankle situation. There seems to be some kind of disconnect between Andrew Luck and the Colts on all this. I think sometimes they're talking too much about it. I think every one of them should just be quiet and treat them. Um, I would be concerned if, if, if it is a calf issue, first thing that comes to my mind is Kevin Durant. Because initially that was diagnosed as a calf issue, right? Winds up blowing out his Achilles. Um, if it's a high ankle sprain, those are the, they're the biggest pain in the neck, excuse the analogy, but the biggest pain in the ankle in the National Football League. Guys get high ankle sprains because you're stopping and starting as a quarterback, you're pushing off, you're changing direction. Um, if it's a bone, the X-rays would have probably shown that, and he's going to. He should, and it should be immobile, unless they feel like he's going to work himself through it. I think they have to tread on real, real soft ground here. I really believe that they have to take as much time as they need until Andrew feels better. That football team without him is not the same, and maybe you miss week one or two. And I've, I've sort of with the preseason schedule the way it is. Basically, week one and week two, to me, are glorified preseason games because that's where you get your conditioning. That's where you actually play football. That's where you actually get hit and hit people because you don't do it through the entire four weeks of the preseason. I mean, you play maybe 40 snaps, of which very little means anything. So, to me, I would tread real carefully when it comes to Andrew and getting him out on the football field. And as this thing goes on, you hear more and more descriptions of what the problem is, and that, to me, is, is a concern. I think, I think his, that is a major concern in Indianapolis. Well, Joe, I know you got all the preseason going on, doing all the games for the Redskins. you got the Falcons coming up on Thursday night. You're going to be doing that game. What's the biggest thing that stood out from you with, for, for the Redskins so far this training camp? The lack of offense. Um, the numbers, we, they can't score. I mean, it was. Uh, I was looking at that. Matter of fact, one of the things I'm going to talk about in one of our our segments during the game or in the open tomorrow night is that they've got to learn. They've got to figure out a way to get the ball in the end zone. I mean, the special teams have not been very good. But I can. That just is a bunch of guys out there just running around. They don't have a unit set. But people forget you have offense, defense, special teams in the National Football League, and each unit has to have somebody who's in charge of it. I think they're still looking for somebody to be able to do that and looking for additions to the special teams. But I, I think they have to figure out a way to get the ball to receivers and get the ball in the end zone, more than just one or two big plays inside the game. You can follow on Twitter, at Theisman7. That is at Theisman7, Super Bowl champion, Joe Theisman, <laughs> as I will say that for you, Joe. Appreciate it as always, my friend. We'll talk to you soon. Hey, Thanks Joe. so much. Thank you. And also, tell Antonio, I, I, the helmet's available if he needs it. All right. <laughs> It really is. I'm mean, more than happy to give it to him. It's my pleasure. Put that thing in storage, man. We don't want. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if that would be cleared by the if Joe's helmet would be cleared by the NFL. It right wouldn't now. even be cleared by FedEx. We don't want that. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. See you guys. See you, Joe. I mean, that'd be great. Here you go, Antonio. The one because you know Joe was last the last quarterback to have the, the one bar across his line, and nobody would ever wear that helmet. Now, here you go, Antonio. Wear this, and uh, great sight lines in that helmet, though. You don't have to worry about anything blocking your vision. You don't. Ha, 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 ha.